We've been in a will they, won't they cycle with the Federal Reserve all year. Of course, I'm talking about cutting interest rates. At the start of 2024, markets expected six cuts this year, but inflation's not budging, and now any cuts at all are in question. I want to bring in former Kansas City Fed President Thomas Honig. Uh, Tom, Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kaskari just said that the Fed may need to hold rates where they are all year. For you, what data would you need to see to justify cutting rates? I don't think that they will be or should be uh, easing rates this year. If you think about it for a moment, um, the, the, the consensus is building among economists. It's not uni- universal yet that the real rate of equilibrium rate of interest for policy, the real rate without inflation is around 2%. It's risen from what they used to think was less than 1% to closer to 2%. And that's because fiscal policy has been very strong. The economy has been very strong. The labor market has been very strong. So 2% is the new, what I'll call equilibrium rate. And if that's the case, uh, if you were wanting to have 2% inflation, your your rate over the long term um, w- would be uh, different. But right now, the nominal policy rate, if I'm making sense, the nominal policy rate is 5%, and inflation is 3%. So the real rate is 2%. So in a sense, we're in a, what I'll, I'll refer to as an unstable equilibrium, because at this level, at the current level of 5%, 5.3% Fed funds rate, nominal policy rate. We're in a situation where inflation stay, should stay around 3%. So if the, if the Fed really wants to bring their inflation numbers down to 2%, they've got to raise rates. And they certainly can't ease or, or cut rates at this point. So that's a fairly uh, long answer to a straightforward question, but it is, it is a complicated time. And the Fed is really going to have a difficult time cutting rates. But what I'm hearing from you is that you don't think that the current rate is restrictive enough. It's it's not if you want inflation down to 2%. However, you I recognize that you have to be careful because at the moment, the banking industry is very vulnerable. And if it starts to tumble, then you'll have a recession, a major recession, and they won't avoid that. So they're in a, they're in a tight spot. That's all there is to it. Do you think that a soft landing is still possible? I think anything is possible, um, but I think it will be very difficult for them um, to do that because uh, we have, think about it. We have <clears throat> we have inflation running at three percent steadily for the last six months, despite different people saying taking different time periods to get a different answer. But it's been running around three percent, and the economy has done well under those under that conditions, uh, and therefore I think it is. Um, uh, this un, what I call this unstable equilibrium. So either you're going to have to raise rates to bring it down and risk a greater financial problem and recession, or you're going to have to let inflation run higher than your so-called target, which you're committed to 2%. So it's very hard to imagine a soft landing under these conditions. Maybe if enough time runs at the current level, uh, things will um, align to a soft landing, but it is unlikely. And it seems like that last point is the direction that the Fed is going. You know, they've obviously been holding rates for some time now and now hearing that maybe they want to hold rates for the rest of the year, just hoping that it'll trickle down. Not a not a ton of fast action here. I wanted to ask you something, though. There are certainly accusations out there that the Fed is too data dependent. Um, Mohamed El Arian said that the Fed has become a play by play commentator. Do you think that the Fed is in that cycle right now where they are too dependent on the data that's coming out every month to make their decision? Well, they certainly appear to be, don't they? Because they're last late last fall and into December, there was they were talking about rate cuts. Uh, the data changes suddenly and the inflation numbers aren't as uh, hopeful as they thought. And they, they start talking about higher for longer. Then they say, but maybe, maybe a cut. And I would remind you of one other thing. Yes, they're data dependent, but also they very much want to cut rates. Uh, so that's in the play. So it's this constant uh, inflation number of 3% or better that's holding them back. And even saying that, I would remind you that at the last meeting, they actually eased policy. They reduced their quantitative tightening substantially. So they're now 
um, uh, not allowing their balance sheet to run off as quickly, that makes financing for the government's debt a little less stressful. If you were still making these decisions um, and, and having a vote on this, what what data would be most important for you to look at? Well, I, I would look at you know a, a host of data. Certainly, I would look at the inflation numbers since that's your target. Uh, and I would follow that carefully. They are looking at the labor market. That's that's correct to look at it to see how strong it is. Uh, and and I would uh, I would I would look at the banking industry just as they apparently are. So I don't know that they're they're looking at the wrong data. It's just that they they keep changing how they're looking at the data. For example, if they have been looking at the data year on year and they're looking at the CPI, the consumer price index, as well as the personal consumption expenditures price index, they would have known inflation was still running too high at 3%. And they would have never started talking about cutting rates last January and December. And had they done that, the market would have not, not have got quite so uh, ambitious, if you will, in terms of their uh, uh, of almost turning to a boom in like environment. And we might have been able to think about a soft landing now, but they got ahead of themselves. They looked at the most recent data. It looked like inflation was coming down. And by gosh, we're going to cut rates. Too, they said it too soon. And that caused them, uh, I think now, greater problems and a more difficult time achieving their soft landing. So what is your best guess for what their plan is moving forward? Do you you already said that you don't think they should cut rates this year and but you also said that they really want to. So uh, is it hold steady and do you see action in 2025? Is that what we're looking at right now? Well, I think number 1, they're going to hold the rates steady, they should. Number 2, they are going to I think continue to ease quantitative tightening since that's a big factor in the long term in longer term interest rates. So in that sense, they are easing rates uh, indirectly. Mm -hmm. So they'll, I think they'll continue along that plan. I think possibly uh, if inflation doesn't come down and I'm, I don't see why it would next year, then they may have to actually raise rates next year, which would be a slowing of the economy into 2025 and perhaps beyond. So the long term outlook isn't necessarily for lower inflation. Long-term outlook is really quite uncertain, and that's why they should stop talking about data month to month and look at the longer run and say, when we're confident that inflation is at 2%, then we will begin to talk about lowering rates. And I don't mean it has to be exactly at 2%, but a lot closer to 2% than 3% before they start actually moving down. Thomas Honig, former Kansas City Fed president, thank you so much for your insight. Glad to be with you. Thank you.